there's our road here. And across the way, some of our neighbors' homes. I'll zoom up so you can get a little better view. So you can kind of see it's our little starter homes. It's actually a nice, nice build area. Maturing neighborhood in here. And of course you get the Nice views across the valley, the Manzano Mountains out there. To the north of them, further would be the Sandias up by Albuquerque. So this area is about two hours south, southeast of Albuquerque. The uh, Deer Canyon Preserve, it's a nature preserve. Anyway, we just finished closing on two adjacent lots. Anyway, they're kind of adjacent around here on our road. At the very bottom of the road here is the bottom lot. The upper lot here, I'm standing almost next to it. We gotta drive a little further to the entrance, but uh, we'll have a, a decent view too when we build up here. Anyway, it's probably another year before we get around to groundbreaking, it just takes time. So here we are visiting our lower lot and uh, yeah, let's see, a little address number. And behind me here, that's the power of the lot line along the, the street here. The streets are like you can see behind me, just a gravel road through here. But it's well maintained. I mean, I've seen a lot of worse gravel roads in my time. And then also behind me here, try to get this in the shot. You can see our well, um, shared well systems line to this property, the lower lot. We don't think we'll ever build here, but it's still a nice lot we'll hold on to. It's adjacent to our upper lot. And the upper lot, of course, we're gonna build our country home. But uh, this is a three quarter inch shutoff valve that's in that second lot line here that we would then, if we did build here, hook up to this three quarter inch uh, shut off valve here and then trench it down to the bill site and the bill site would be down this driveway behind me and we're just scoping out what how bad a shape the driveway's in. We've driven through here a few times before but never really saw, stopped and measured just how bad the, the trench is that the water and erosion has been beaten away on. Anyway there's also uh, a, another one behind me here. This one is for venting, it looks like, somehow. And this might be another vent pipe. And then this is some other kind of shut-off valve, but I don't think we hook up to it. It's probably some other kind of re pressure release thing. Anyway, that's where we're at with the entrance to the lower lot. So you can kind of see behind me, Judy's walking down the driveway. Overall, it's pretty good shape. Like I said, we've driven this before, the car up and down here, um, without you know, massive clearance, whatever, and it seemed to handle pretty well. It still needs more work, obviously, but anyway, let's find those bad erosion areas and get some measurements. So here we are hiking down the driveway to the lower lot. It's only like a couple hundred feet down here, but kind of behind me here is kind of the southern view, which is where you'd probably want to point the back patio of the yard out towards these mountains. There's also a kind of a valley view down this way with the Manzanos um, way out there um, and more of the mountain view behind there almost might be more southern that way I think this we got to get the compass and verify which way south because it's taking advantage of that solar gain and what we want to do if we ever do anything with this lot I don't think we will because like I say it's one contiguous piece of land from our top property, which is back behind me this way, which is up the hill. And we'll, of course, more video of that too, but this is kind of the build site and the building envelope down this lower lot. You know, someday maybe we'll do something with it, but doubtful. 
because it just makes for one big, nice, contiguous piece of property to have with the home. Okay, here we are at the upper lot. And kind of at my feet here, if we can see it. Is the uh, water and the uh, Uh, see if the electrical electrical is right there at the road so that and the water right behind me here we'll have to dig a common trench and uh, run it up about 12 or 1300 feet from here to get it to the uh, bill site if we use this default bill site that comes with the property there's some challenges but they're not real big challenges this is kind of our entrance. It's a nice little hike, and there's some little problems I'm going to point out and measure in a moment. Anyway, so that first culvert, I may have dropped that on this prior video segment. I may not have been recording. The sun's so bright, it's so hard to see the, the little screens here. But anyway. The first culvert was a little 20 foot section, 12 inches is the max size it should be. Um, the second one could be easily 18, 24, 36 inches, depending on how much we want to take advantage of this slope here. You can see that it washes through this part of the driveway, but up here is a big drop and a big rise back to where I'm standing now, where one could bring a Nice big dump truck or two of um, crushed rock to really bury a much bigger and compact a much bigger uh, culvert in there if we really want to have a maximum water flow through that area. Anyway, this is probably the second worst one I would imagine during a rainstorm. The next one's another big challenge, but we'll see what that looks like in a second. So this next one's pretty bad too, and I'm sure it's going to be a 24 inch culvert that goes across here you can kind of see down in here this wash through the road behind me and this is going up to the bill site I kind of pivoted around for a different angle as I'm walking down the driveway here so this is up but that's going behind me anyway a, a larger culvert probably a 20 foot section I'm sure it's washed out pretty bad a lot of uh soil and rock and compacting to really bury and clean that area up to help with any future uh, drainage problems and erosion problems. So let's look at the last one. It's also a challenge. So the area, area behind me is like the last nasty spot. And it's probably going to be a good 24 inch culvert too by the looks of it. You can kind of see back here running across the driveway and it runs into a stream bed down there that goes down towards that lower lot we were showing earlier. Anyway, it's probably a good 30 feet of section of the culvert that size. And then I'll try to show behind me another problem. Just needs a little excavating and backhoe work to try to clean it up. But kind of see behind me how it kind of cuts in closer to the road. Really should be pushed pushed back a bit up the hill and fill this area back in. Same with below me here, where it cuts across the road. Hopefully I can show this easily. Oops. Anyway, it cuts across the road down there. We need to direct it parallel along the road here down to the mouth of the culvert down below. So there's a little digging through here and trying to redirect this water that comes through the hillside. But if we walk up the driveway, Judy's already well engaged. This takes us to the plateau before descending down into the bill site. So I'll hike up there and show that. So now that we've seen it in good weather, because it seems like every other time we've been up here to this little peak, this isn't really the building site, it's before the building site. It's probably several hundred feet before the building site. As you look down this road here, this way, 
there's that's where the building site actually is and it's nice enough but where we're at now if we clear out some of the trees at this elevation this is a peak of the driveway we have really the best commanding views here and this is probably where we really should build because we've got a great view of the mountains behind us to the east and more of the northerly view back here of course we got the towards the bill site you got the setting sun in the west and then you even have a little bit of a view to the south here too which if you can somehow orient orientate this house and any solar gain towards this direction you definitely have a more efficient home that would be nice but let's take a little quick hike down to the actual building site and check it out so this is the actual building site, you know, that the developer defined. And it's been kind of pre-cleared. Yeah, there's some little weeds and stuff. And there's even a little marker back here, flag somewhere behind me. I can't see it with all the bright sun. But you can see behind us, this is kind of the south direction. Even clearing some of the trees, we're really not going to have much of a view. Same with the western direction, it's okay. More to the north behind me. And uh, what I think right back there is that little rock, for interesting rock formation I think would be great for a hot tub and gazebo back there. But uh, yeah, the driveway behind me, the peak we were just at earlier is right up here where I think the view is probably even better but I think we can still clear enough down here to still have a pretty amazing views of Mazzano's and uh, even towards back to Mountain Air, the town of Mountain Air is kind of to the north back here, if I can point right. <laughs> but anyway, let us know what you think. Should we build down on the official build site and try to take advantage of the views as best we can? And I think we can do a pretty good job. We won't be disappointed, I'm sure. Especially with that hot tub site back there and those rock formations, I think would be awesome because there's a little drop off there where you get a nice view from there too. Or should we redefine the, the building site and building envelope location, which we're allowed to do that, and put it up at the peak of the driveway where it peaks back up there and it comes up that hill, and then it comes down this way. I know you can't see real well that it descends, but it really does descend, you know, probably 20, 30 feet in elevation down to this site. So you have that nice gain, so a little more panoramic up there, I think. But what do you think? Share your thoughts. Thank you for watching an episode of Nature Preserve Life in Mountain Air, New Mexico. If you'd like to follow along and support our channel, please press the subscribe button and gong that bell to be notified. After all, it's free. Free is a very good price. In the future, we'll plan to focus our episodes on our eco-friendly build of earthen construction and dark night astronomy, that big guy there, and tourism of the regional area, as well as establishing a Patreon account for the sole support of wildlife in Deer Canyon Preserve. So stay tuned. Cheers.